DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry, presents the Cavalcade of America. Tonight's star, Robert Cummings. Our play, Navy Blue. The story of Lieutenant Victor Blue, United States Navy. Tonight's DuPont play begins on the bridge of the United States gunboat Suwanee in Buena Vista Bay off the coast of Cuba. You understand your orders, Mr. Blue. As soon as we are safely through the channel, you will board the ammunition ship Gussie in our convoy and supervise the unloading of our cargo at Kaibari End. Aye, sir. I know I don't need to remind you of the importance of this operation. Arms, ammunition, and medical supplies for our ally ashore, General Gomez. If we lose Gomez, we may lose Cuba. Uh, yes, sir. I'll keep that in mind, sir. And please inform Senor Ramirez, that Cuban pilot we took down at Key West. Tell him to take over. It's essential that we make Kaibari in before nightfall. I believe he's out in the boat taking soundings, sir. Taking soundings? I thought he knew every rock and shoal on this coast. But we don't have to worry, sir. It's the Gussie. She's heavily loaded and her draft may be too great for the channel without a dredging operation. But there's no time for that. Why didn't he tell us all this at Key West? Well, I don't think he understood we were to convoy her all the way through, sir. Well, we are and we must. We'll never free Cuba from Spain unless all these expeditions succeed. <laughs> well, there's Ramirez now. I guess he's got the soundings. Ahoy, in the boat there. Laura, Matt, ladder, one of you men. Aye, sir. Easy there. Easy does it. Up here, Ramirez. Ah, uh, looks as if he's got bad news. Yes, uh, sir, there might be another way. Excuse me, Mr. Blue. Well, Ramirez. Senor Capitan, I finished taking the soundings and charted our course into the bay. Good. Take over, Senor Ramirez. Mr. Blue, signal the gussie to follow us in. Aye, aye, sir. Excuse me, Senor Capitan, but this is not possible. What's that? The gunboat I can take over the bar, yes. But the cargo ship, no. Senor Ramirez, do you see those two columns of smoke beyond the point there? Above the mangrove trees? Exactly. There are two Spanish gunboats anchored over there. And if they take a notion to patrol this end of the harbor and we're caught out here alongside this floating powder keg... Sir, if I may make a suggestion. Yes, Mr. Blue? If we could get word to General Gomez ashore, he might be able to arrange transport from another harbor, sir. And how are we to get word to General Gomez, Mr. Blue? Well, I had in mind a small sailboat, sir, that could be maneuvered in water too shallow for the Spanish patrol boats to navigate. But they can pick you off with their Mauser rifles. They have a greater range than ours. I could shove off after dark and make it ashore, sir. Through 20 miles of treacherous shoal waters in total darkness, and we don't even know for sure where Gomez's headquarters are by this time. I was counting on getting that information at Kaibari Inn. Excuse me, Capitan. Yes, Senor Ramirez. Uh, we could go ashore near Santa Margarita. I know a man there at Pacifico who would lead us to General Gomez. You think you can make it in the longboat, Mr. Blue? Well, sir, I can take a Ramirez. How many men will you need for crew? Uh, Twelve is the most I can carry, fully equipped and armed. I'll need that many to pull oars if the wind fails us, sir. Well, I don't like to risk that many men, but I have no choice. Very well. You will assemble your crew and be ready to get underway at sunset, Mr. Blue. Aye, aye, sir. Oh, and uh, good luck. Thank you, sir. At sunset, we hoisted our makeshift sail and headed for the channel. We turned back and saluted as our mother ship hauled down the ensign at evening colors. She looked lonesome as she rode the swells of after convoy vessels. Ahead of us, and to the west, two columns of black smoke showed against the red sky. The enemy gunboat still lay at anchor beyond the point. I prayed they'd stay there until we could complete our mission. And at 1 a.m., we hauled sail in a shallow lagoon near shore. Ramirez sat tensely at the helm, straining his eyes toward the dark undergrowth at the water's edge. I see a light to starboard, sir. Not so loud now. Now listen to me, men. When we get ashore, stay close together. But be ready to separate and take cover if necessary. Now, if you're fired upon, don't return the fire until you're sure it's the enemy, not a Cuban. Is that clear? Yes, uh, sir. The landing is just ahead, sir. All right, secure the boat riding. Check your equipment, men. Rifles ready. Get in it. Who's that? Get in it. Cuba Libre. Adelante. Oh, he's What did he say? He asked me to come ashore alone and unarmed. Well, do you trust him? I am not sure. Can I say, Senor Alvarez? Yes. And send me la casa de Alvarez. Yes, 
He says he can show me to the house of my friend who knows where is General Gomez. I go with him. If all goes well, I send up a flare. You come ashore with the men then. Yeah, and if all doesn't go well. In that case, I will be too dead to send up the flare. And you better get ready to fight your way ashore. But this is enemy held territory. I don't like the idea of taking the men through the village. What's your worry, Lieutenant? Those paisanas won't know who you are. <laughs> I only wish I believed that. Do you know something, Lieutenant? So do I. I was hesitant about letting Ramirez go ashore on arms. But there was no alternative. We remained in the boat, our hands on our rifles, our eyes fixed on the sky. A dim halo of light above the dark trees indicated the direction of the village. At ten minutes past one, the silence was broken by the sound of gunfire not more than a half a mile away. Something's happening ashore, sir. Wonder what it is. We better get our feet on the ground. Come on, men. We're going ashore. Quiet as you can, then. Now, can you all hear me? Aye, sir. Aye, sir. Your orders are to separate and take cover in those trees. Remember your firing instructions. Be sure it's the enemy. Now, if you hear a blast on this whistle, hit the road and follow me. Ryder, come on. We're going to do some scouting. Aye, aye, sir. Hold it. Ryder, you hear that? Sounds like a whole battalion marching straight this way. Hit the ditch, Riley. Now, the Lilo, they'll be searching these bushes. Order from their officer, the soldiers broke ranks and plunged into the bushes beside the road, swinging broad blade machetes as they went. A blade whistled past my ear, and I felt a draft on my neck as one of them leapt into the ditch less than a foot away from my hiding place. Soon they passed beyond us, deeper into the thickets. I looked up to see if there were more coming. And at that moment, I saw a flare rising brightly into the night sky above the village. There's one there is a signal. All is well, he thinks. Well, what do you think, Riley? Shall we run for it now with our hands full of machete? Or wait until they pick up their rifles? I say hit that road now, sir. All right. Here goes. On your feet now to hear men on the double. On the double. Let's go. 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 Let's
It landed through the top of my house. You mean when the village was being bombarded by our fleet? Only I am not in the village at the time, Lieutenant. The enemy was in the village. But did it fall on an enemy? No. It passed over the village, landed through the house of Gomez, your friend. Well, I assure you, sir, it was an accident. Mm. Did you uh, personally shoot that gun, Lieutenant? Oh, no, not I, sir. But I, I know that such mistakes can't happen. This war is teaching us a great many things about ourselves, about our enemies, and about our friends, General Gomez. The same with Cuba, Lieutenant. But how can Gomez fight a war without bullets, without medical supplies? Well, that is what I came to see you about, General. My ship is in convoy of an ammunition ship lying outside the banks. And we have provisions for you, too. A whole ship? Just for us? <laughs> you make joke on Gomez. So why do you say that, sir? Well, excuse me. It is hard to grasp all at once. But well, we heard you were badly in need of supplies, sir. However, there is something else that I came to tell you. Don't tell me too much all at once. I got tears in my eyes now. You want to make me weep? You don't imagine what this means for our cause or for me, Lieutenant, and for Cuba. Uh, you as a Navy will think Gomez is one big fool. Oh, General Gomez, our Navy and all our fighting men think you and your liberators great so. Ten months fighting, Lieutenant, sleeping in wet tents. Rain, rain, rain all the time and half my army sick. Finally, I take this town. And those Spaniards have taken to their heels, grabbing everything they could not destroy. So we must share the little we have with the civilians here. And this is how Gomez welcomes the friend who has come to save us. General. Uh, well, huh? the, the ship is lying outside the banks, but the bay is too shallow. It's impossible to bring her into Kaiberien. Ah, so. So he's a joke after all. Huh? But wait. Wait, I have a solution. We take the ship to a Terraderos on the south coast. General Sebreco will arrange transport overland to me. Yes, sir. I will convey your message to my commander, sir. You are a caballero, lieutenant. A horseman of the sea. <laughs> I, I am ashamed that I ever doubted the friendship of U.S. Navy. What, what is a little shelter of my house? <laughs> it's a, a joke, a friendly joke. Huh? You, you make joke on Gomez like... Like, um, all friends shooting at each other a little bit, huh? You, you must believe me that we never meant to fire on you, Jeffalo. Huh? It's uh, not a joke? Oh, certainly not, sir. But I was so sure. I, I sent my soldiers with machetes to make joke on you in exchange. <laughs> See, well, no matter. Now I embrace you. Adios, Lieutenant. Buena suerte. And Cuba Libre. Cuba Libre, sir. <laughs> March back to our boat was without incident. We shoved off, navigated the lagoon under oars, and presently hoisted sails. Dawn was just breaking when we slipped into the open waters of Buena Vista Bay. Lieutenant Blue. Yes, sir, man. The column of smoke to starboard. It looks like one of those enemy gunboats. Uh-oh. And she's coming fast. I don't think they sighted us yet, sir. Well, maybe we can make the ship before they close, close in on us, huh? Not on the road. There's not enough wind to make it on the tail. All right, then. We better get, better get ready to fight. Rest your oars, men. Check your rifles. How do you make it a distance now, Ramirez? About uh, half a mile. I wonder if they know their rifles have greater range than ours. If not, they'll probably circle us, keeping us out of range so they can size up our weapons. I think you're right. They're diminishing speed. Any suggestions, Ramirez? Well, I think we better pray for a miracle. You know something, Ramirez? I was just thinking the same thing. Tonight on the Cavalcade of America, Robert Cummings is starring as Lieutenant Victor Blue in Navy Blue. The small boat of Lieutenant Blue with its crew of 12 men returning to their ship from a mission ashore in Cuba has been sighted by an enemy gunboat that is now bearing down on it. Ramirez. Yes, Lieutenant. Is it my eyes or have they stopped making smoke? They're right, Senor. I don't understand this. It's that miracle, Lieutenant. She's stopping. But they're dead in the water. Wait. Maybe it's a trick. No, no. Those Spaniards have their own way so long. They, they've grown careless with the engine room watch. So, poof. 
If I go out and press on our steam, we put the gravity as fast as we can. You think we can make it before they get up steam? No. There is sure to be another gunboat there. That is the way they patrol these waters. Yes, and we'd lead them straight to the Suwani and our ammunition ship. They'd alert their other gunboats, and we'd lose some badly needed bullets for Cuba Libre. Not to mention American Libre. There is one way we might manage, Lieutenant. What's that? I know this harbor. Over there, see? Way over. There are shallow shore waters where they would not dare to follow us. Well, where would that take us, though? Due east. Only about 20 miles out of our way. To the point, huh? Mm, but the difficulty is, there's a strong current that's blood tight. We might be swept around the point and find ourselves between two enemy boats instead of face to face with just this one. Well, I'd rather go down that way than risk betraying our ship. Who with you there, sir? Uh, All right, men, break out those oars and roll. Come on, we'll never make it at this rate. Break your back there. Pull those oars. (laughs) Ramirez. Ramirez. Yes, Lieutenant. There's the open sea. We've made it. We've made it. But we're losing headway. The men are too tired. We never master this current. Men, rest your oars. But the yaw will be carried straight That is my that intention, end. Ramirez. Come about. Sir, I do not wish Then to... don't. Come about, I say. Enemy craft lying through. Get ahead. Continue on course, Ramirez. Aye, aye. Well, we make the inlet come about again. Keep two alongside the smaller enemy vessel. Aye, sir. What do you make of them above decks, Riley? Decks are deserted. Bridge, too. Of course. Why did I not remember? Remember what, Ramirez? Today is the festival for Spanish sailors. It is the custom for the officers and crews of Spanish ships to fraternize and visit each other's ships. And take breakfast together. And they'd naturally get together on the bigger ship of the two, huh? I still do not understand. There should be a watch on the smaller one. Yet the bridge is deserted. They even left their ladder out. Maybe they've baited a trap for us, sir. Well, if it's a trap, they'll be in it and we'll be on top of it. Backwater with those oars, men. Bring her steady under that ladder. We're boarding this ship, every man of us. Someone will stay with his boat here, Lieutenant. Let it drift. If we succeed, we won't need it. If we fail, we'll be dead. <laughs> Johnson, take the ladder up. Send a party below at the engine room and start lighting off the boilers. Aye, aye, sir. I'm going to try something else here. Lieutenant, do you hear someone sing? Yes, I do. Aboard this ship, too. Hey, you down there. Me, Vive. Can you make it on your own power or shall I throw you a tow line? Captain, I have boarded your vessel and claim her as a prize of war. My crew will get her underway to a place I will designate. Meanwhile, I must place you under arrest. But uh, I don't do nothing. I oversleep on festival day. I feel good, sir. I sing alone in my cabin. A little celebration in honor of the invisible Spanish Navy. (laughs) Hey, that's right, a pistol. Now, Captain, get up to the bridge. Go on, march. Straight ahead, Captain. Straight ahead. Well, that's a very fine signal lamp you have there. Captain, I want you to signal to the watch on your sister ship. I warn you, my pilot speaks your language and knows the code. So don't try any trick. What do you wish I say, senor? Say this, Captain. Ship boarded by overwhelming superior... Hey, I don't think I can... Captain... Just do as I tell you. All right, all right. I blink. Yes. Resistance is useless. Advise, Captain, your vessel. Surrender at once. All right, repeat the message. Hey, wait. He flashes answering signals. Yes, I see it. What does he say? He says he will fight. 
Friday, Johnson, go below. Find the gun lockers. Issue sidearms and a mauser to each man. Aye, aye, sir. He's covered in an officer of the other ship are coming on deck. Yeah, he's got a megaphone. Looks like he wants a palaver. Hey! Bill Marco! Ahoy, the ship! Habla Inglés! Yes! Tell my colleague is a godly wife! I find this ship the I think! Then you'll think. Riley. Aye, aye, sir. The rifles are issued. Shall we open fire? No, we'll board her and drive them into the sea. She's a fine prize. I don't want to dirty up her deck. Up anchors. Up anchors. Full steam ahead. Full steam ahead. Ribery. Aye, aye. Put your helm down. Now steer for her bridge. Aye, aye. When the officers aboard the other ship saw us preparing to get underway, they dropped their rifles. We could see them. They had not, no idea of how many of us there were, but acted as if we were a full complement for their vessel, now under my command. As we tore ahead, gaining speed, we bore down on them. First the men. Then the officers on the other ship gave way to panic. One after another, they jumped overboard and started swimming to the shore. Not until their last man had hit the water did I order Ramirez to alter course. He spun the helm, and our vessel heeled over precariously. All of our ships straight to the hull of her sister. For a few moments, both ships rocked and trembled like big vessels gone on a reef in a fourth ten gale. And then they righted themselves and drifted apart, with only a few sisterly scratches to show for their brief and violent encounter. I sent half the men to board the other vessel and get her a turn of it. On our voyage back to the bank, we sighted our small boat adrift and secured it in tow. Lieutenant Blue reporting, sir. Good job, Blue. How does it go, boy? Officer and crew present accounted for, Captain. No casualties. And you found Gomez? Yes, sir. General Gomez requests that the ammunition cargo be set ashore on the south coast where General Sabrecos will arrange transport. Excellent. Sir. Very good. We'll do it. Thank you, sir. However, I would like to ask you just one question, Mr. Blue. Yes, sir. Mr. Blue. I think you want a mission to find out from General Gomez where to dump the contents of that powder keg we're convoying in. You come back with two shallow draft Spanish vessels. Vessels that are no earthly use except for patrolling those cursed shoal waters in Buena Vista Bay. Uh, you'll excuse me, sir, but uh, you'll have to admit that one of them had an excellent signal lamp and a very fine telescope. But how can I explain this to the Admiral? You're on an intelligence, not a battle mission. Well, sir, you know how narrow the dividing line between operations can be. Uh, between intelligence and espionage, for instance. A few American sailors in a rowboat captured two Spanish patrol vessels. How can I call that espionage? <laughs> well, if you don't mind, sir, I repeat, one of them had an excellent light signal lamp and a very fine telescope. These are invaluable aids in intelligence work in the fleet, sir. Uh, possibly we may construe it that way, and that will square the mission as an intelligence operation, sir. By George, Mr. Blue, I'm beginning to catch your drift. Wouldn't be surprised if you got advanced a grade in rank for this. Yes, sir. I'll wager the end of this war finds you a full lieutenant, Mr. Blue. In the years to come, Victor Blue was to be advanced not one, but five grades in rank. The young junior grade lieutenant who was cited for extraordinary heroism in the Spanish-American War, lived to serve his nation in World War I, which he entered as a commander and from which he emerged as a rear admiral and holder of the coveted Distinguished Service Medal. Victor Blue then went on to become Chief of Staff of the Pacific Fleet to climax the colorful career of valor and distinction in the highest tradition of the United States Naval Service. Robert Cummings and the Cavalcade players for tonight's DuPont play, Navy Blue. Next week, the star of the DuPont Cavalcade will be Ginger Rogers. Our story, 700 Boiled Shirts. 
is the romantic saga of an old Nantucket sailing ship and a girl who wouldn't be left behind. Be sure to listen. Tonight's Upon Cavalcade, Navy Blue, starring Robert Cummings, was written by Robert Tallman and was based on material from the book The Spy in America by George S. Bryan. With Robert Cummings tonight, you heard Arnold Robertson, Santos Ortega, Carlos Montalban, George Petrie, Kenny Delmar, and Daniel Ucko. Robert Cummings is currently starring in the Broadway play Faithfully Yours. Music was composed by Arden Cornwell, conducted by Donald Boyd. Tonight's program was directed by Albert Ward. This is Cy Harris speaking. Don't forget next week, our star, Ginger Rogers. The DuPont Cavalcade of America comes to you from the Velasco Theater in New York and is sponsored by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. Makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Next is Hollywood Theater on NBC.